Hello and welcome to the Lab Ride. My name is Sebastian Martin and today I'm going to show you how to make a leather sheath for a knife or something like a small cutlass. This is my experimental hunting knife with a carbon fiber core and a real horn handle. And I want to make a nice sheath for it. So I've got this 2 mm thin leather. It is uh, still flexible. And you can use this for like a belt pouch, a pocket, a bag, or a small sheath like this, or the top part of a shoe, something like that. But it is uh, too thin to make uh, something that should be rigid in of itself. So it will be floppy sheath, but uh, as this is a very small knife, I'm not that worried about it. So let's start with uh, tools and materials. I already saw the leather also need something to cut the leather. Pen to mark where you cut. And you either need uh, rivets and tools for riveting or you need a leather sewing kit. And uh, in this episode especially I will show you the use of this tool here uh, to sew the sheath together. And uh, after that, I will just use the sewing machine and point you to this video or the earlier video where I sewed the belt pouch by hand. But uh, this tool's tool still has its advantages. For example, this uh, will still sew leather together that is too thick for my machine as long as I punch holes in the leather before I sew it. So, let's get started by making a template. Now I've got this uh, really old, really big calendar I use to make my templates on. So, let's see. What I want to have is uh, Just one knitting, just one stitches, and the other side I will just roll over. So let me mark this down because you need to leave a little bit of space for your stitches for this to actually come down on your knife. So we need about a centimeter for your stitches. Now I will roll this over. And leave one centimeter here as well. Let's see. What I should do? Alright, cut it out. Let's see how this fits.
fine. Seems to work well. As long as I don't do the stitches too far from the edge. So let's put this on the leather. Alright, I will need to put some holes into this because I want to mount this upside down on my cross belt. I will need to put a loop on this to hold the knife in place. And of course, if you want to uh, put this on a belt, on a normal belt, we will need to put belt loop on this. This can be an extra piece you put on here or uh, you include a belt loop so an uh, extension from this point you can make a loop out of put this on your belt. But this is not supposed to go on my belt but on my cross belt and I will just uh, put few holes in this and then uh, lace it on with some leather laces. So let me put some holes into this. Holes in here. Put two pair pairs of holes in this. And one in the middle for good measure to lace this on. Now I will need to make a small loop to hold this in place. So let me cut off like 1.5. Thick piece of this leather. And the loop. We'll go across here and Hold it in place. And on the other side of that, I'll put this little knob here that you can just screw onto the leather. This should fit into one of the smaller hole punches. There, it fits in this one. Well, that's the one I use. Make it as small as possible. About as big as it needs to be. I want this to go across to about here. Now let me 
temporarily. I fix this to the sheath so I can make this the proper length. Now it's time to dye the leather. I use uh, this oil dye, walnut color. And uh, as was the last time when I dyed leather, rubber gloves, because everything that dyes leather will dye your skin as well. I will let this dry for a spell about half an hour then I come back okay, and this has dried for about half an hour now let me put uh, before I sew this together some final bits and pieces on it Once I've sewn it together, it will be way harder to do this. And I have to put a hole in this for the knob to pass through. And that works by having a hole that is actually too small for the knob. So it won't go through this hole. So then I make a little cut and when this is pulled, it pulls into the cut. Small cut. this just screws on there and I put a drop of glue on there that will make it permanent All right. let's screw this on Mm. 
remove any excess glue. can stitch this together. Let me mark where the stitches need to be really quick. I want them half a centimeter, five millimeters from the edge. Right, and I will start by actually gluing this together because it is much easier to stitch this if it is already held together by glue. So I'll put some glue on the edges and put it together. This is contact glue, so it works by spreading it on both sides. You want to glue together, and then letting it dry for about ten minutes. Then you think it really won't stick anymore, and then it will stick. So I'll put this together real quick to spread the glue. Now I'll let it dry for about 10 minutes and I'll get back to you. Right, this is dried for 10 minutes. So now just let me carefully put this together. Press it together firmly. Oh. This will make it easier to do the stitches. Right. I have this little spike wheel here. Uh, that I use to mark where the stitches are going to be so they will be uh, at a uniform distance This puts a nice pattern here. But the pattern is way too dense for what I'm going for, so I will use only every second mark. Right, that starts by punching some holes. makes for good ground to do this on. Uh, 
and I will go all the way around like this and maybe go all the way around from the other side again to widen the holes. This will take some time. Let me get back to you once I'm finished. Alright, I went all the way around. Now it's time to stitch it together and I want to show you the use of this tool. This is a sewing awl and it works a bit like a manual sewing machine. So I put needle in here. This has a little spool that holds some thread, like the bottom spool of a sewing machine. And I will need a second needle. Mm -hmm. some thread of its own. This is waxed saddler's thread, really tough stuff. Now you put this through here and you have like this loop. Make sure that this end here goes to your spool and put a thread through the other end and try not to pull it all the way through. Then you pull this back. And this now holds together like the stitches from a sewing machine would. Tie the ends off. And treat the process for the next hole. So go through. Stubborn. Go through. Go through the loop. And pull back out. And pull it tight. Once again, go through, go through the loop. And pull tight. What you want to have is that the loop is actually between both sides. So I get this pattern each side. Once more, 
go through. Go through the loop. No. Pull tight. And repeat the process all the way through. And that's uh, not as fast as it's just stitching it by hand, but can be done with thicker material. Or, uh, anyhow, I'm faster with this than stitching it by hand, because if you're stitching by hand to pull the needle through, you would need a pair of pliers and with this you have a big handle on it you can put it push it through and pull it out without the need of extra tools oh well, this is uh, for thick leather this is better than sewing it by hand uh, really thin leather you can just sew through with your settler needles now I will finish this up and then I show you how it looks All right, stitches are done, and I've secured the stitches by stitching one hole backwards and then tying it down. Now I will burn this down with the lighter. Now it's almost done. Knife goes in. Knife secures with this. Knife goes out. Well, this is just a tight fit, but it is supposed to be. Now, final step I trim down the leather on the edges. So it looks nice, flush. And you can st skip the next step, it's not really necessary. But I like to use this product called edge coat to treat the uh, edges of the leather it's a uh, sort of acrylic paint and just paint it on the edges and it makes them uh, look better in my opinion and makes them more durable keeps them I'm getting worn out. I just paint it on here like this and let it dry for a spell. Now I get back to you once that is done. Right, this has dried. Now, last step. I want this uh, to stay in shape. I want this shape be very tight around this blade. So I soak this in warm water. And when it dries out it will uh, become way stiffer 
and keep the shape it is in that point. If you use uh, really hot, like boiling water, uh, the leather will become hard as bone and will be hard to actually keep it in the form you want. But if you use hand warm water, the leather becomes really subtle and flexible. Let me dry this off a bit. Now I want this to be a little bit flatter. I will do. I will put the knife in it. to dry overnight. Just a little bit of weight to keep it in shape. Right, this is now dried overnight. And as you can see, it's now pretty much in the shape of the blade. But it's not completely dry yet. So I will put this into the sun that's shining on my workbench over day and let it dry out completely without the knife in it. And I get back to you once that is done. Alright, this has now dried all day. Let me Rub some oil on it. Careful not to pull the laces out. That would be inconvenient. And I'm just using some ballastol for this. This completes the build. So if you liked this video, please uh, like it down below and maybe leave a comment. If you have uh, any suggestions what I should be making videos about, feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you and goodbye.